tonight's event. Uh, and a big thank you to the other volunteers, Lisa Joy, Andy Sparks, the forecaster editors, who put together the previous candidates night that the two of us agreed to attend. Thank you, all of you volunteers. It was a big effort to get this together. Uh, I'm Valentine Sheldon. I was born and raised in Maine, and I am very, very proud to call Maine my home. I'm a creative thinker, collaborator, and problem solver. Uh, I work for Microsoft in research during the tech boom. Uh, I invented and patented technology that I went on to build a company around. And I am a Peabody Award-winning independent television producer and editor. And for fun, I wrote an award-winning children's picture book. My proudest achievement, however, are my two spirited independent daughters who attend the Falmouth schools and my happy, loving family life here in Falmouth. Many of you know me already. I have recently led the charge for responsible growth in town. I spent countless hours studying town documents and bringing relevant growth data to light that the town has validated. I've championed rolling back the reckless 2016 rezoning, particularly in RA, among other things. I've talked to hundreds of residents and, hearing their cons and have heard their concerns, and have energized and brought together a very large group of residents from every corner of town to get them interested and involved with town governance. I am a proven town leader who is focused on residents and representing them. First and foremost, I'm focused on protecting their homes and wallets, the character of our neighborhoods and our schools. In essence, our collective pursuit of happiness. Among the other things that I am for, I'm for a complete rollback of the 2016 rezoning, multi-zones in RA to reduce non-conformity, responsible, appropriate economic development, responsible residential growth, our great schools with low mill rates, aging in place, dramatically improving town communications and transparency. And in the spirit of transparency, I'd like to disclose that I have not and will not take money from past or present council members, developers, or anyone who was involved with the 2016 rezoning or allow a political party to solicit funds for me. I don't, and I don't want to owe allegiance to a failed policy, an ideology, or a business if I'm elected. I have accepted one solicited $50 donation. It was given to me by an 85-year-old retired Marine Colonel who told me that he had never made a campaign contribution in his life before. Can I just finish that? He told me he was inspired because of what I was doing for Falmouth and what he knew I could do as a town counselor. Thank you, Colonel King, for your faith and your trust, and thank you for your long service to this country. I'm super excited and prepared and ready to get to work to inspire more residents to get involved with town government and governance and to create a resident-focused future for Falmouth. I'm counting on your vote. Thank you. I'm going to answer the same question, just so everybody gets to see where everybody is on this issue, because it's an important issue, obviously. Uh, do you support creation of more affordable housing uh, happening in Falmouth? So I do, of course. Like I said, uh, I think in the Forecaster article, you know, Falmouth is a wonderful place, and it's wonderful <coughs> people want to come here. What I believe is, is that we need some sort of a balance when we're going to make that sort of decision. Because if we, the housing is not, uh, the price of housing is not something that a town can control. It is market driven. And unfortunately, the people up here who get elected, the council today, they cannot mandate the price of real estate or your home or anything else. So that's, that's the sort of, dilemma that you have as a counselor um, and as a municipality. Uh, so I would like to just turn my attention to um, the Habitat for Humanity development that is on the table at the moment, um, which I think probably this person, whoever wrote this, is probably referring to. Um, because that is sort of a, a town, that sort of development is something the town can actually decide to do. Um, and Falmouth has a history 
the, the, the Habitat for Humanity development that is being proposed is almost identical to the same one that was put in place, or, or not put in place, it was proposed five years ago, and residents didn't want it. Five years later, Habitat for Humanity has come back, they're proposing the same thing. New counselors, maybe new, new ideas about Habitat for Humanity is the idea. Maybe, you know, the, 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 the populace has a different opinion about it today. I would like to know what the residents of Falmouth feel about that. Because that development, I've actually looked into it, I've done some numbers about it. Am I, am I done? No, I don't know what's going on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have 10 full seconds. <laughs> okay, uh, so I've looked into it, and you know, if the town wants that sort of thing, development, which that would be wonderful. The, what I would say as a counselor is I would like to know how we are going to pay for it in terms of the impacts on schools. Because what I have figured out with the taxes that would be paid on those um, houses in that proposed development, I think it's 23, 25, I've talked to Godfrey Woods about this. Um, it would put a, about a $700,000 hole in our school budget. Thank you. That I've heard a lot about from residents. Uh, I'll read it again. Before 2016, auxiliary dwelling units were a conditional use and were rare. Now they're unconditional and proliferating. Some are now being built for summer tourist rentals, seriously affecting the character of neighborhoods. Some new homes are being built with ADUs included, making them indistinguishable from two family homes. This is another unintended consequence that comes from dispensing with impact studies. What would you do about this problem? Uh, well, I think we need to, as I've said many, many times, roll back the 2016 zoning and go back to a place where the ADUs were conditional. So many people don't understand what conditional use means, but in general, it means that it gives the neighbors the ability to have a say and some input on whether the conditional use actually happens or not. And before the 2016 zoning, uh, it was very easy to get an ADU. My understanding is, is that none or very few were ever rejected. There was an average of one a year. Now, since the 2016 rezoning, uh, the average is nine a year. And my understanding is that there are uh, permits uh, that have been issued and are pending of 10 already this year, and we're, we're halfway through. So clearly they're popular. The question is, what are they being used for? Now, I have been in neighborhoods talking to residents, and some people's neighborhoods are completely transformed in the summer. Almost in one neighborhood I was speaking to, to a family, every neighbor has created an ADU, and every one of them is rented out on Airbnb. In the summertime, they have a, a shared beach. This resident goes down to the beach. They don't know anybody on the beach. They're all people who were there for the weekend. Now that was not the intended. The, the, what what you know the, the drafters of the of the rezoning wanted. Obviously, they wanted this was an aging in place type of, of a policy, but it's been abused. And I think if we roll it back to the conditional use. We could allow more ADUs, but with some restrictions. I know some people who had ADUs built back in the 80s, and there were tremendous restrictions put on it. It could only be a family member that, that lived in it. Now, the age, this ADU issue also has affected that uh, the sober house that was in the Portland Press Herald recently. Uh, six people, six non-related people can live in an ADU. They're 850 square feet. So, you need to roll it back. A uh, teacher was recently fired because she spends too much time uh, breastfeeding and expressing uh, milk at the school system. She's a teacher for four years, and apparently other uh, teaching, teacher uh, techs objected to her taking a couple of hours here or half an hour there to do this. What is your position on firing teachers for uh, expressing milk or breastfeeding? As a Please mom. repeat the question. Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, for me? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the question was uh, that uh, recently a teacher was fired um, because she was taking too much time or too many breaks um, pumping. 
expressing milk. Um, <clears throat> as as a mom and as I'm a huge advocate for women and for children, I think that, and I don't know the whole situation, first of all, I, I, do, I would like to say that uh, I don't know what discussions have been had, what kind of uh, accommodations should have been made. Um, and as somebody who leads also a team, I make extreme accommodations for my team. And we will always work together to make sure that everybody's needs are, needs are met. I don't believe treating everybody the same is the right thing to do. Uh, I think it's situational. You need to look around and you need to see, okay, who can step in here, who can step in there to help each other out because we are a community. Um, so I would like to know more about it. I, I'm, I'm not privy to all of the probably to all of the information, uh, but yes, I would be hard pressed to fire a mom who is uh, struggling to breastfeed or to pump food, especially because this is, this is for a short period of time. So could there have been other things done um, to, to alleviate the situation and for the community to come together? Would you like to answer that? Sure. Is that um, yeah, I also don't have all the facts and don't know how much time was taken or what accommodations were made. But um, I think the rights of women and telling them what to do and how to do it is something we need to be very careful about. And especially with the, the needs of the family and the needs for her to actual pump for her health and her, and her family, it's important to accommodate that in every way that you can. Thank you. If elected, will you support the innovative Initiative for Fallon to donate plus or minus 20 acres behind the police station to Habitat for Humanity to build 23 affordable. <laughs> um, I think I answered that already. Um, it just need, there's a balance there. I'll just answer this really quickly. So, yes, if the town decides to do it, the residents, then we should do it if there's a balance. So we need some economic development to fill that hole which will be created in the school budget. That's my answer on that. What are the two most important issues facing Falmouth? So, Jay, you answered that before. Uh, the two, well, I think land use, obviously. Um, land use policies, which I think, you know, depending on what the council does coming up, I think part of that will be fixed. I think we do need to do more on that. Obviously, there are ADU problems with ADUs, and in my mind, I think you should roll the whole thing back and do it methodically with resident input the way it should be done, the way that the state recommends it be done for a town, um, with impact studies on traffic, on taxes, on the schools, etc. I think, I think I've covered that multiple times at uh, different um, town, town council, town hall events. Uh, I think the 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 second most important issue facing Falmouth is trust. I think in a lot of ways that trust has been broken with our, the way the residents feel about the town council, uh, about how the town has governed, uh, and the decisions that have been made uh, that residents were not aware of. And so that folds into my 2A, 2, 2A, almost 3 which is communications, and I discussed this in my, my forecaster interview, which the town needs to clearly communicate better with residents. And with better communication, we will get more involvement, like Janice has been saying, um, from residents. If people knew that there were spots on LPAC, for example, and it was advertised in the monthly town crier, I think you might have had more than two people go up for, to try and interview for the spot. Um, that's one example. Uh, of something that we could do. And the other example that I threw out there, which is to build an app that the town can have that only Falmouth residents are, are able to, to use, there, it, that it would integrate not only what happens at town hall, it would be push technology, so you would get updates. Oh, there's a town hall meeting, town council meeting tonight, and it's about growth and density. It will also include the school events, like high school plays, Etc. So it would draw the whole community together because this is where we all live today, and this is where we should be communicating. Everybody who came out tonight, I think it was a tremendous turnout, uh, and it's a big effort to come out to an event like this. Um, so thank you.
come to listen to us all and get to know us as candidates because as Jim was saying earlier, you know, pay attention to the people who sit up here and what gets done. It is much more important than what Donald Trump is doing or this one or that one. It, this group of people who sit here affect your life like nobody else. And if you're not watching, things happen that you might not like. And you have an opportunity to change it. And that's, I'll tell you, I never in a million years thought I would be standing up here or thought I would ever run for any kind of elected office along this you know, town council. I am so glad that I got involved. I have met hundreds of people all across the town and many people are now more involved with the town. And I think it's, I think it's a tremendous thing. And I sure as hell, I'm going to be watching whatever if I'm not elected, I'm watching whatever you guys are going to be doing because it's super important and I don't want to wake up one day when my neighbor comes over and tells me, did you know that the town was rezoned in 2016? And I say no. Like, I want to know and I want all of you to know whether it's the rezoning or whether you know we've gone to automated garbage uh, pickup, which is a, something that people are talking about, not very sexy, but like it will affect your life in a major way. So... Um, that, that, that's, I don't really know uh, quite what else to say, except that I think that I, I, what, what I like about what is happening now is that people are actually coming to these events, they're coming to the town council meetings, they're reading about it in the newspaper, they're talking about it. So there is a vigorous debate that is happening, and I think that is so important, and that is what, because that is what makes a town, that's what makes a community. And I don't have any, I don't think asking questions is uncivil. I don't think having a debate is uncivil. This is a democracy. We can disagree and then we come together with the best option out of that debate. It's important. I hope to be very involved. I hope to be a council member up here doing vigorous debates, asking tough questions so that we can make, and I can help make Falmouth a better place to live. So you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. 